Good morning, good afternoon and good evening dear Viola friends all over the world. Welcome to the fourth live broadcast of the International Viola Society. I'm really excited because this time my own Dutch Viola Society is our guest. My name is Karin Dolman and together with my beloved board member of the International Viola Society, Marcin Morawski, will host, we will host the show tonight. So, good evening, good evening, Marcin. Good evening, dear Viola friends. It's oh, always a pleasure to be with you. Yeah, and Marcin, you have to put first down your volume of your... <laughs> Otherwise we hear it both times, so... Give me sorry. Um, so briefly, my name is Marcin Murawski. I'm a violist. I started to play viola in last millennium, so it's like third year, third the first year of my viola playing, and I obviously keep uh, playing the instrument ever since. I'm a professor of viola at the Ignacy Jan Paderewski Academy of Music in Poznan, Poland, yeah. and a member of the board of the International Viola Society since January 2020, in the rank of executive secretary. Yeah. So, so, but that's enough of me. I'm not the most important person here. Karin, would you be so kind to introduce the Dutch Viola Society board? Please. I will, I will, I will. Uh, they are all in the waiting room and we all are together. So this is very nice. Um, we have Christopher Skauch, Ursula Skauch, and Lynn Stamm. And we have Veronica Lenartova. And we have Anna Den Heder. So I will invite them. Uh, um, so there we go. And I will, let's see if this works. Uh, who do we have? I go to the participants. This is not going really well. We do it like this. Uh, there they are. I have to first put this away. There we go. Here comes Christopher. Yay. Uh, yeah, it's not so going so quick. Hi, Christopher. Yes, there Good he is. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Nice to be here. <laughs> and then we go to Ursula Skauch. Come in, Ursula. There she is. Yes. Hi, Ursula. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Uh, I'm the secretary of the Dutch Hero Society and yeah. Uh, we're going yeah, for it today. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, there comes Emlyn Stamm. Hi, Emlyn. Good evening. Really glad you can all join us for this broadcast. My name's Emlyn. I'm the treasurer of the Dutch Viola Society. Very good. And we come in. Then we have Veronika Lenartova. And there she Oh, hi! Hi, Veronica! Hi. What a nice hi. background! Yep. Hi, everyone! Nice to be here. Welcome to everyone who is watching the YouTube stream. I'm Veronica. I'm the board member of the Dutch Viola Society. And, and the last one we have is Anna Den Heider. Anna! Yes, there she is. Wait, we can't hear you. Once more. Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming and joining us. I'm Anna Den Herder, viola player from Amsterdam. I'm being member of the society for one year during the corona. <laughs> That's how it is, huh? So um, I have here my whole script. Um, we have all everybody have we have got in here. So uh, Christopher, tell a bit what we get tonight, and then we go on for the next one. You have all. Oh no, we start with Anna, eh? I think. Eh? Yeah, yes, I think we Anna. will go to the next movie. Is about the Erasmus viola, built in 2018 by four violin makers during the International Viola Congress in Rotterdam. Uh, one viola made by four people. It's very interesting how that will sound. And uh, Judith Sauman will tell us about it because she was the first uh, player from the instrument. Thank you. That's uh, nice to uh, watch later on. And then Ursula, something about the quiz, I think. Eh? So yes, tonight we will have uh, a real uh, live quiz. Uh, it's it's real time, so uh, there will be an answer sheet in the 
link down below the, the live stream and uh, you have to fill it in uh, within 10 minutes but I will explain the full uh, rules later but yes it will be a lot of fun and we even have a prize for Ooh. the best uh, answers so and then Christopher we get some more right so uh, we uh, have produced a nice little uh, movie uh, looking back at the uh, International Viola Congress in Rotterdam in 2018 which was hosted by us the Dutch Viola Society and uh, I've uh, scraped together some sounds and pictures uh, uh, to try to uh, capture some of the highlights from uh, that wonderful Congress very nice and Veronica what will you we get more well, we will get also a viola sextet of Leo Samama, uh, played by the board of the Dutch Viola Society. And I will tell some more later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's uh, that's nice. Um, then, Emlyn, we have some more. Yeah, so Karen Dolman, who's been talking here the whole time, is the driving force behind the Dutch Viola Society for many years already, and also a strong force behind the International Viola Society now. That's and true. We thought it will be really nice to make a little portrait of Karen. So I went with a camera to her home and around her city of Dordrecht. And we had a good time and talked and I made a little movie which is all about Karen, who she is, what she's like, and how she put together this Viola Society. So I hope you enjoy this film and let's get started. So, this is my home house where I live already from the age of 17 with my parents. Uh, we bought this house, we restored the whole house, and now I live there with my husband. everywhere there are the violin competitions here in Holland where they do eh, what's a kind of gathering of uh, and not no gathering uh, even the double basses did some something together and no viola players and I think we are the, the nicest people of the orchestra so uh, why was there nothing for the viola so I thought um, let's start very small in my hometown here in Dordrecht with a small viola festival so um, I thought I just invite some friends of mine and we got the money of the town government I have here I had just around the corner a very nice church which was a Kunstkerk um, and I could get it for free so that was very good as well and we could be in the museum so uh, this is the museum of course about of, of corona it's all closed now but the nice thing is uh, here in the museum we had as well some workshops and like that and on the other side, it's now uh, totally packed, is the Kunstkerk, where we started uh, the first uh, viola festival here in the, in the church. So it was really all very near to each other. And they are now uh, restoring it again, and it will be having a public function again. We are really happy to have this, that it's coming back. So the festival was born on the 25th, but there was big announcement there will be a, a viola festival in Haarlem on exactly the same dates as our festival, which was of course very stupid. Uh, it was good that there was a, another festival, but we didn't know because I was organizing here and Esther Pieterlei was um, organizing in Haarlem. So I thought this should be changed. 
that when, when you organize something for your instrument, you should know of each other. So I looked a bit on the internet and then I found the International Viola Society and I saw that a lot of uh, different countries have already these viola societies, which really uh, works. Well, why don't I just announce that we are going to found a Dutch Viola Society? Yeah. <clears throat> so I, I needed, of course, a few people who wanted to start that with me. So I just looked around, okay, so I said, Roald, you will be my, I didn't even ask him, I said, Roald, you will be my financial support in the Dutch Viola Society. He said, uh, yes. <laughs> and then I saw Christopher walking around, who was really uh, into everything and that like that. And I thought, okay, I've asked Christopher as well. Christopher, would you like to, I asked him, I must say, uh, would you like to start with me at uh, the Dutch Viola Society? And he was right away. Uh, Francine Schapborn, uh, one of the teachers, he said yes, and I needed, I thought, I was already within this idea we need amateur viola players, we need professional viola players, and we need students to have really all the disciplines uh, together that you know who would like to have what or what. I think I, I saw that really from the beginning that I had to do that, because I'm an amateur horn player. Right. I play horn in an amateur orchestra. So I know, and I see from the back as well, I can see the professional coming from the front, uh, over the orchestra, but I see as an amateur, I see as well, with the, with the knowledge of a professional player, I see uh, how an orchestra reacts. So I saw conductors coming to the orchestra, being really annoyed because they were kind of tired and said, oh, you have to do this and this and this. But, you know, as an amateur, you worked the whole day, you have a shouting conductor on the other side, so which doesn't work. So, so I had this connection already. So you know more uh, as a as a, an amateur player, but as well as a professional. And I was teaching, of course, in in, in Rotterdam. So I knew I knew already uh, the need what the students have. So um, yeah, this is why I thought about this combination. And I think this should be uh, more acknowledged by all the viola societies. You have to make uh, a guideline. Yeah. Which you can find maybe on the uh, on the website of the International Viola Society or on the website of the Dutch Viola Society. You can the Belgians they speak Dutch as well. So look on our website, I would say, and yeah. look what guidelines we have. Maybe there are a few things what you would like to change for your uh, guidelines, and just go to um, to write the papers, and then you are uh, the Belgian Viola Society. Yeah. The 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 step to go to the International Viola Society is very small. Mm -hmm. They will find you, they want to be committed, but then you have to do something. Yeah. So the website is crucial. You have to um, find the events, you have to find people around who look with you. Are there events, are there concerts, are there, is there something happening? And I saw the violin at the moment, by, by accident actually, and this man, he was quite clever with um, uh, funding. Uh, so it meant that he bought a violin uh, and he could uh, get money back from the tax uh, and that he donated uh, to the uh, Dutch Viola Society. For five years? For five years, so he, uh, I think it was five years. So, um, so that was, I think, quite important in the beginning. Uh, so I put in money and, and the man got the tax reduction. So it was an I idealistic gesture of me without realizing completely what I was doing. Mm. You know, it's all very theoretical when people talk about violin making and I think uh, seeing it is, is much better. So the idea was uh, not to make it into a f fiddle making race or a, a contest, but really to show the process of uh, building an instrument to the public. There are four builders, all from the same backgrounds. We all studied at the New York School of Violin Making. New York. Um, New York. In, 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 in England, England yeah. yeah. That's near Nottingham. Right. Nottingham. And um, <laughs> so, you know, um, I thought and um, that it was very important that we all were friends. Yeah. It was not only having the same backgrounds building-wise, uh, but th that you also, you know, there's an immense stress uh, in time. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the interesting thing was that you start with four uh, and there's enough work for the four. But when the process goes on, um, you, at the end you only need one person. 
So it was important to accept who was the quickest and most able maker, <laughs> which is very hard for violin makers to accept. That we never thought it would work, but uh, the idea, whilst doing it, uh, we thought we make a playable instrument, so in the wind, so with the strings on and the bridge you could play it. And um, of course it changes after the varnishing, you know, it's, it's like a wild horse, you know, an unvarnished instrument. The varnish is like an equalizer, but I, we thought already then that it worked very well. The people who were in the team really um, reacted to each other as I hoped. You know, so no, there was no envy or nobody was showing off or whatever. No, everybody took the task he was best in. Yeah, and accepting that, you know. And so at the end I did the cooking. And talking. <laughs> yeah, and talking. <laughs> Sometimes it happens that everything just seems to fit together. And it did in, in, in Rotterdam. Yeah, are, this is in a festival in Poznan. I bought uh, dried mushrooms and I'm going to soak them now and use them for the chicken tonight. And this is, this is not, <laughs> not uh, on purpose. This, uh, <laughs> no, it's just an accident. So really, actually, we live in this uh, whole uh, congress. Yeah. <laughs> It's a very big market now. Uh, all the people who sell their food are allowed to stand here. But we have a very good fishmongers. And we won already in Dordrecht, we won the prize of the best markets of Holland two times. So it's really good. And I think it's because it's so, so big. So it's, it's not only this square, but it goes on to the whole street along down there. And you see the corona uh, mask things and like that. So, yeah, it's a very nice market. Yeah, very good. <laughs> We're just gonna go inside, that's enough. <laughs> it's a bit a mess, but that's everything. Drop and collect. <laughs> yes. Yeah, this is my pottery because I have one big other passion. I have two passions, which is music and pottery. It was even like when I was uh, uh, 17 and I was finishing school. My parents asked me, what would you like to be as a professional? So I thought, I can play the violin, at that time still the violin, um, and I can do pottery. Which one could I earn money with? And I thought, maybe as a violin teacher, I could earn my money. And uh, this is... Uh, so I went to the conservatory in Rotterdam, myself as a student. My passion with viola started when I was in my fourth year so I finished first my violin and and then I switched over um, to the viola very late so the only I studied only two years the viola so but like we always say uh, you really start of your profession starts after you finished your school of the age of seven I started already with pottery because my mother is an art teacher so she knows a lot about art and this is what I yeah what I mainly make so I'm working now as well on tiles for a kitchen, an old kitchen, mm -hmm. and I have to make all the tiles, which are 1700 tiles. So I will be working on that for a whole year. Now here's my oven, maybe you can... Yeah, sure, I'll around. walk behind you. This is the, as well where my toilet is. But, um, so, and you can see it's still on 652... Uh, uh, Degrees. It went up till uh, 1060 today, uh, uh, last night, because the tiles. There are 100 tiles now in this oven, so I can every every time I can do 100 tiles in one go into this oven. But with pottery as well, of course, a lot. Uh, what's nice about the building as well to tell is um, uh, it was an old fire brigade. Uh, there, this was the room where. All the old, uh, where the pumps, the fire pumps were standing and because of that we have these three doors that they could go really out of it. And where did they build the fire brigade houses? Always next to the church. So I have the church right away. Yeah, so we can see it. Let's just yes. go look out the window here. Yeah. You can yeah, see yeah. the church right the here. The ch church. Where we do concerts as well, which is nice. Well, the garage of my husband's car, a three-wheeled car. It's a bit bumped because he had the last he had an accident, but there will come a new car for him. Um, yeah. 
I like, of course, the, the, the technique of, of throwing on the, on the wheel like that. Uh, but I like decorating as well. And so I like to, as well, to make, um, uh, doing some um, uh, um, dice designing into the pots, which I really like. Unfortunately, people like always very plain uh, crockery. Which is sometimes a bit boring. Uh, my and what I do with my customers who, who buy with me, if they want to buy, for example, their whole uh, outfit of things, they first they get something home. So I give them a few plates with them, and they have to eat from it first before they decide. Because at home it always looks different as when you are in a shop. Um, so this is how I work. So for our international viewers what if they want can they order something from you online or how how could they, they order yeah, something yeah they could go to my website um, which is uh, hof 3 so where we are now this is the hof of and they call it now hof of the netherlands which is not uh, fair because it's the hof, hof of holland and we were only these two provinces we were holland and now the netherlands is of course much bigger but still uh, what is so important of this um, square is not the square itself, but the history where what happened. So in uh, 1572, the, we uh, had um, we were still conquered by the Spanish people, and we didn't get them out of the country because of one reason: we believed the we had all these uh, kinds of religions. Uh, the one was uh, believing that the left toe should be on the right foot and the right toe should be on the left foot. This stupid small uh, things where we were quarreling about. So we were quarreling about that instead of uh, gathering together and get the Spanish out of the country. And in 1572, keepers of the, of the towns uh, got together here in this square uh, by uh, Willem of Orange. Um, and they signed a manifest that everybody was allowed to believe, to think and to do what he wanted. Which is nowadays, I think, the most big top topic again. So the, the manifest is here in this, in this building and you can still sign it. We worked the first year to uh, a national Viola Congress, which was held in, where was it, Deventer. Yeah. Yeah. Which which was really nice, and we had a uh, we had a wonderful time together. And then we visited for the first time. We were visited in Krakow, in in Poland, the first international Viola Congress. We were sitting at the table. We were very nervous, uh, like like again like school children to come in this in this in this classroom with all uh, the founders of or, or leaders of the international Viola society and everything and we were sitting at this big table with all the societies together and we really thought about Ooh, who are we you know yeah. as, as, a, as a small child coming into there and then we hear that people were talking already about a new congress made and we, and, and I went like this to oh, what should we do as well an international Viola congress yeah, that's nice. Yeah, but uh, but not next year. No, no, of course not next year. And I said, um, well, we actually we are quite new here in this group, but uh, we would like already to announce that we will um, that we will uh, host the congress of two thousand eighteen in the Netherlands. So we had five years yeah. to organize, which that's fine. I thought right? yeah, that's fine. But then we came home, of course, and we had to tell the others. So, so and we said. I said into our first meeting, I said, well, actually, Roald and I, um, we thought maybe about organizing 2018, the International Viola Congress. And we thought, we'll look around. But I must say, they were all very enthusiastic. So we thought, okay, oh, this is okay. <laughs> so we can go. In Rotterdam, I had my partners, partners like the doula, as yeah. you, because I was working yeah. there at the doula. I worked in Kodak, in, in the in the yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, so this was... Totally the where we should be. Yeah. So we found our partners and everything and, and work from that on. So um, Dordrecht is as well uh, known by uh, the name of Small Venice. We have all the channels uh, going through, this, through the town. The whole square was uh, built over the, over the river. I think still it's very poor, the, the, the houses on the backside. 
but it changes in this last 20 years enormously. There are more people who are really more fond of their house and know that the house has a back as well. So we are now on the Lange Ijzeren Brug, which means the Long Iron Bridge. It's a very long one bridge, it's over one of our harbors. And what you see there is the, the big church. It was built on cow skins and what you can see I think as well that it leans a bit to the, to the right. Um, which happened of course a lot in Holland. Uh, the, the, the soil is so, uh, so soft that even it, so they couldn't finish the church, uh, they wanted to build it much higher. But it's not possible because the, the church was hanging over more and more. So they had to stop. So this is, the, uh, this is our museum harbor. Once in the two years we have Dort in Stone, which is uh, all the steam boats, steam trains and everything will come to Dordrecht. And this harbor is one big festival of uh, steam. I'm really happy. Yeah. Of course, in everything what you organize, there's something where you think this I really don't like, how, yeah. it's, how it's going on, uh, working with people uh, about some issues. Yeah. But in general, I'm so happy that we did it. And yeah. That's, I think, the reason why I'm still here. So we are now actually in front of the old Europort. So not Rotterdam, but Dordrecht was a big harbor town where all the ships came from the sea. They came into uh, here and here was the, the place where you had to pay your taxes. Or from river where you're looking now, that's the river, that's the Rhine, and which goes to Köln, to Switzerland, like that. There, that's the river which flows to Rotterdam. And then you have on the other side, the river goes here on the corner and this goes to Zealand. In November 2018, the International Viola Congress met in Rotterdam. During this congress, four luthiers worked together to build a viola as the congress visitors looked on. Kai Thomas Roth, Gijsbert van Ziel, Chaim Achtin Ribbe and Jan van der Elst, who all studied in Newark on Trent, undertook this ambitious challenge together. It was a race against time to see if they could finish the instrument by the end of the Congress, but, sure enough, by the last day, the viola, unvarnished, was ready to be strung for the first time. The sound test in the auditorium was very positive. In the half year that followed, the viola was finished with a beautiful ground coat and varnish. It was then purchased by the Erasmus Society for the purpose of use as a loan instrument at Code Arts University of the Arts. My name is Judith Salmon. 
I study classical viola at Code Arts, and I have had the pleasure of playing this instrument for the past two years. From the start, the instrument was a joy to play, and as time passed, I got to know the instrument and discover its possibilities of sound as I played it in solo, chamber music, and large ensemble settings, as well as for my artistic research as part of my master's study. Its bright and open sound and playability could handle whatever sounds or genres I asked of it with ease. As I finish my studies and play my final performances on this viola, I'm grateful for the chance to have played it, and I wish the next player a happy journey with it.
Wait, can you hear me now? Ah, wow, good evening. Yes, hello Karin. Uh, well, we'll continue with the next part of our live stream, which is a very exciting viola quiz. And uh, this quiz uh, is uh, made up of uh, 14 questions, multiple choice questions. Uh, and they will be read by uh, the board members of the Dutch Viola Society. Um, and they are also uh, themed to our own personalities. Um, and, uh, well, of course, you cannot interact with us uh, via Zoom, like Karen and I are doing. Um, but we have an online submission form um, to uh, give us the answers. Um, and if you uh, want to win the prize, then you have to uh, submit the question, the, the answers, within uh, five minutes after the last question was broadcast. So um, you don't have till eternity to submit your answers. Um, and the uh, participant with the most correct answers wins. And if there's a tie, then the first submitted uh, form wins with the most correct questions. Um, also, if you uh, have submitted your form, um, or there are any, no, if you have submitted your form, then you should still keep an eye on your email because we will invite you to this Zoom meeting to celebrate your victory. Um, but of course you don't have to um, immediately open a new tab and click along. You can also just use pen and paper or a pencil and paper or uh, a chalkboard, whatever you like, and, uh, and then submit them uh, after the last question via the form from your uh, paper. I hope this is clear. If there are any questions, leave them in the chat. Um, and uh, Karin, I think you can start playing the viola quiz with us. Also, invite your friends, by the way. <laughs> yeah, we have uh, we have to uh, uh, still uh, a lot of people to go. So, but we go here for the quiz. So, everybody ready? Yes. There we go. I am. Welcome to the big viola quiz. To fill in your answers, use the special quiz answer form on the Dutch Viola Society website. A link is given in the description of the live stream below. everyone. My three questions will be about the musician, conductor and composer Willem Kess. Willem Kess was born in my hometown Dordrecht. His father earned his money in butter and cheese trading. He had six siblings, but only he and his eldest brother reached an age over ten years. As a child, he always walked behind the barrel organ and made his first music on harmonica. Luckily, he was noticed by August Böhme, who, trained by Louis Spohr, had a position in teaching in Dordrecht. He learned Willem Kess to play the violin, piano and score reading. Kess got a scholarship to go to Germany and studied with Karl Reinecke and Ferdinand David. After his studies, he returned to Dordrecht and founded the Dordrecht Symphony Orchestra. He worked in Amsterdam too as the concertmaster of the Amsterdam Park Orchestra. In 1888 he was the founder and the first conductor of the now so famous Concertgebouw Orchestra. Here comes my first question. Which famous viola concerto did Kess introduce in Holland? First as viola soloist and later with the Concertgebouw Orchestra as conductor many times. Was that A. The Lost Viola Concerto by Johann Sebastian Bach 
B. The Viola Concerto by York Bowen. C. Harold in Italy by Hector Bellio. Or D. Der Schwanenreer by Paul Hindemith. There's one thing Willem Kess should be honored much more in the world. He trained his musicians very thorough. He also introduced an important topic for the whole string section. What was that? A. He introduced the collective bowing. B. He introduced the tuning before playing. C. He forbid the string players to use cut strings anymore. Or D. Instead of using third violins, he introduced the viola and let the violinists play the viola as well. The public also had to go into a new phase. What did Willem Kess as well introduce? A. He let the public take drinks and sit at the table. Or B. He asked his public to wear face masks. Or C. The public had to pay for their tickets. Or D. The public was not any longer allowed to take drinks or smoke during the performances. Thank you. Hello, my name is Anna den Herder and I'm living in Amsterdam and playing the viola. My job is at the Netherlands Chamber Orchestra and I'm doing lots of chamber music next to it. I'm also having more fun in life with working with the horses and making oil paintings or cooking for friends. And that's about it, I think. First question for the quiz. The viola fail. We all have our nightmares about what could go wrong during a concert. And Yuri Bashmet reached the news in 2010 with a big viola failure. What happened during that concert? A. In the middle of the piece he suddenly screamed. Or B, in the middle of the piece, his still gut broke with a big bang. C, his pants dropped down. Or D, he hit the conductor with his bow. I'm really curious what you choose. Second question. Amazon has a top list of best sold viola strings. And nothing in life is what you expect. So, I'm really curious what you think is the best sold brand of the viola strings in Amazon. Is that A. Pirastro B. Dadario C. Tomastique Or D. Chanel Third question. Harold in Italy, one of the famous pieces with a brilliant part for the viola. What do you think if I tell you this piece didn't exist if no violinist was involved? That by having a great Stradivarius viola at home, one famous violin player encouraged Berlioz to compose a piece for viola. Who was this violin player? A. Jascha Heifetz B. Nicolo Paganini, C. Pablo de Sarasate, or D. Fritz Kreisler. Hello, my name is Evelyn Stan. I've been a board member of the Dutch Viola Society since 2013. In my work as a violist, I play a lot of chamber music, for example, with the Isai String Trio. I'm also the artistic director of the New European Ensemble, where I play a lot of contemporary work. And I recently completed my doctorate 
at Leiden University, which focused on early recordings of the viola and the performance style that we hear in viola players at the beginning of the 20th century. My first question is related to that research project, and that is as follows. In 1910, the very first commercial recording for a work for viola and piano was released. The question is, who was the violist who played on this first commercially released viola and piano recording? Was that A, Oscar Nedball, B, Lionel Turtis, C, William Primrose, or D, Maurice Vieux? The next question is about a work for viola and orchestra, and the question is as follows. The original score and set of parts for this viola and orchestra work were on board the Titanic when it sank in 1912. Which work was this? Was it A. Flos Campi by Rafe von Williams? Was it B. The Romance and Finale by Benjamin Dale? Was it C, the pièce de concert by Georges Enescu, or was it D, the viola concerto in C minor by York Bowen? Hi, this is Veronica. I'm a viola player from Rotterdam Philharmonic Orchestra and currently on the board of the Dutch Viola Society. This is my beautiful hometown Bratislava and my two questions are related to two composers that were born here as well, one in 18th century and one in 19th century. My first question is related to Johannes Nepomuk Hummel, who was born here on this street in Bratislava. Hummel wrote in 1820 for violists well-known Fantasia Potpourri. We know Potpourri is a mixture of dried petals and spices. But Potpourri is also a musical form assembling various melodies. Hummel borrowed 60% of the melodies used for this piece from other composers. Which Viennese composer did he quote in his Fantasia Potpourri for viola and orchestra, Opus 94? Was it A. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart? B. Ludwig van Beethoven? C. Joseph Haydn? D. Franz Schubert? My second question is related to the school where the two gentlemen from the photo studied. One of them was Bartok, the other one... In their youth, both composers studied at Gymnasium Gröslingova in Bratislava and later at Liszt Academy of Music in Budapest. Bartok was ethnomusicologist and his compositions were inspired by folk music of East Europe and even Turkey and Algeria. We are grateful for his collection of more than 3000 Slovak folk tunes. However, the music we are listening to is not written by Bartok, but the other man from the picture. We are listening to Romanza from his serenade from String Trio Opus 10, beautifully played by William Primrose. Who is the composer? A. Sultan Kodai B. Franz Liszt C. Erne Tohnani D. George Ligeti
Hi, my name is Ursula Skuik and I have been a student board member with the Dutch Viola Society since 2017. This year I will graduate from the Royal Conservatory in The Hague for my master's in classical viola performance and during my master's I had to research some topic that interested me and what really interests me is vlogging. Yeah, I'm, I'm addicted to watching YouTube videos. So uh, my research specifically was about uh, theatrical vlogging, but of course I also looked at non-fiction uh, examples of what has been done with classical music. So we have two set violin, uh, the two guys from Australia who make funny videos about what it's like to be a classical musician. But there's also great YouTube channels by violists about how to practice. So my first question is... Dr. Molly Gabrion is a violist and a neuroscientist. She posts mini lecture series about how to optimize your music practice for your brain on her YouTube channel. Which of these topics hasn't she covered yet? A. The secret to learning music faster, take more breaks. B. The neuroscience of performing from memory. C. How to practice to increase speed. Or D. How to practice for intonation. In 2010, Cartoon Network started airing a successful animated series. One of the main characters in the series plays the viola. What is the name of the series? Is the name of the series A. Adventure Time B. Phineas and Ferb C. Gravity Falls or D. SpongeBob SquarePants Hello Viola friends, my name is Christopher, I am the current chairman of the Dutch Viola Society. I am an amateur violist, my wife plays the bells and both our daughters play the viola. Oh, and we have four cats. I was born in Norway, the land of the Vikings, with mountains and gorgeous fjords. The Vikings were tough guys who drank mead and killed polar bears with their bare hands. And even today, Norway has very tight speed limits on the roads because there are so many reckless drivers. The Viking also came up with the fiendish Hardangerfiddle, or um, viola. And they were brutal musicians, fending off the mountain trolls with their hardcore viola playing. So here comes my first question, and it's a tough one. The moose or elk is often regarded as an icon of Scandinavian nature. Which Norwegian composer wrote a viola sonata inspired by a moose? Was it A. Johan Kvandal B. Edvard Grieg C. Johan Svensson or D. Ula Jailu Nope, sorry, no hints. Well, Norway is a big country. There's lots of, uh, well, space. So maybe that's why I got interested in space and went to work for the European Space Agency in the Netherlands. We build rockets and cool spacecraft. I work on the Artemis mission, which will fly to the moon in a series of at least six flights, bringing humans back to the moon for the first time in 50 years. And it will, of course, bring them home safely as well. All right, well, it's all well and good that uh, we can fly to the moon, but what's the point, really, if we can't do there what we do best, which is to play? So, how and when will we be able to play the viola on the moon? 
there are a number of challenges to be met. So here comes my last question. Which of the following is not a challenge when playing viola outdoors on the moon? A. There's no air to propagate sound. B. Bow control is tricky due to low gravity. C. Difficult intonation with your astronaut's gloves on. Or D. Those ever-present trombones. Well, food for thought. But one day, my friends, we will have a Viola Congress on the moon. So thank you and bye bye. In November 2018, the Dutch Viola Society hosted the 45th International Viola Congress in Rotterdam. It was the first time this Congress took place in the Netherlands, and this particular year we were also celebrating the 50th anniversary of the International Viola Society. The Congress theme was Exploring New Ways to Perform, and thanks to contributions from violists around the world, the programming fully did justice to this theme. Violists boldly traveled where no violist has gone before, exploring unknown repertoire, premiering dozens of new compositions, combining Bach with Shakespeare, staging wild theatrical performances, playing from the bell towers of Rotterdam, bike marathons dressed as a viola, engaging in debates, live viola building, crossover experiments and reaching out to the vastness of outer space. The most visible public highlights were certainly the evening concerts, featuring world-class violists in the best concert halls of Rotterdam. The opening concert featured the renowned Dule Quartet, augmented by guest violists Nuta Puchhammer and Lisa Egen. The program consisted entirely of viola quintets by Brett Dean, Vaughan Williams and Bruckner. On the second evening, Lawrence Power performed a wonderful program accompanied by the Kodarts Chamber Orchestra and the Laurens Cantorai Choir in works of William Alwyn, Puccini and Hayo Budema. The third evening, November 22nd, was a celebration of the 105th birthday of Benjamin Britten. Tim Ridout and his former teacher Nobuko Imai performed works by Britten and his teacher Frank Bridge. Composer violists Atar Arad and his former student Yuval Gottliebovic premiered their own compositions. The Utrecht Conservatory Strings, conducted by Mikhail Semtsov, brought us Britain's wonderful Lacrimae with Tim Ridout in the solo viola role. The next evening concert was a unique program for viola and percussion with Kim Karkashian and Robin Shilkovsky. And on the closing night, Lawrence Power performed Walton's Viola Concerto in the Great Hall of the Doolen with the Bochum Symphony Orchestra. 
as key to the creation of new musical territories, composers were featured prominently in this congress. The Dutch composer Neo Samama was our composer in residence and contributed with a composition for viola sextet as well as a new piece for viola and canelion. He also hosted a workshop on composing for the viola and a closely related talk show on the same subject. There was also a composition contest which resulted in more than 80 new compositions for viola quartet. The regular daytime congress program included 14 interesting lectures with topics such as brain research, YouTube performance practices, memorization techniques for blind musicians and more. There were 30 recitals with imaginative programming, a number of rediscovered and reconstructed works, for example a new Mozart triple concerto with viola of course, and many programs with distinct national themes from Turkey, Argentina, Norway, Poland and New Zealand. A very special part of the program were the theatrical performances. The students from the Birmingham Viola class had two of them, enacted fragments from Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, accompanied by Prokofiev's ballet music on the viola, and Hindemith's black comedy piece Der Bratschenfimmel, with absurd humor and dark fantasies of death by viola music. The Dutch-based viola duo Black Buyu surprised us with a self-written space odyssey called Moonwalk. The late night sessions in the local music club Matrix were another distinctive program feature. Spectral music, Portuguese fado for viola ensemble, electrical viola and electronics, as well as Dutch jazz hero Une van Geel shaking things up with a fabulous group improv session. Una and the Moonwalkers. During the closing ceremony, the Viola Builder team presented the unvarnished results of the five intense days of cooperation. The Erasmus Viola was born. Also, violist composer Atar Arad received the Silver Alto Clef Award from IVS President Carlos Mario Solari. The IVC 2018 Viola Orchestra, led by Marcin Muravsky, put a festive finishing touch to the ceremony. And the rest is history, literally. The Dutch Viola Society was honored to serve as host for this event, and we had a fantastic team who really made it happen. We hope to see you soon at one of the future international Viola Congresses. Hi Veronica, welcome back. Hello. Okay. I have to to close this a bit. Otherwise everybody can read our chat, so it's better. <laughs> okay, we are we are there. Um uh, Veronica, you wanted to tell us before we go to the last uh, episode of this uh, show. Yes, uh I just would like to say something about the viola sextet of Leo Samama, respectively the history of this uh, piece. Uh, one of the beautiful ways to celebrate the viola was a commission of uh, a piece for the International Viola Congress. And me with my colleagues from the Rotterdam Philharmonic and from the Radio Phil, we're very lucky that uh, we were asked to get together and play this wonderful piece. It was a real celebration of how can you make a huge viola sound conquering uh, each other and uh, celebrating the tunes in either having a conversation and the rest of the group accompanying or just having the same uh, tune played by each of the violas in different ways. Um, it, this piece is just wonderful and I was very glad that we can uh, just get together 
because of this uh, event of the live streaming from the Dutch Viola Society and also how to celebrate with playing together as a board. We are exactly six of us, so yes, let's do it, right? <laughs> Oh well, yeah, it was fun uh, to play it twice, uh, twice a uh, different voice, so I could uh, enjoy the different things of this piece. Okay. And yeah, I would like to say, let's hear some more from Leo Samama himself. Okay, let's do that. Then we go. Uh, Leo, you can come I'm in. Leo Samama. I'm the composer of... Viola Congress, International Viola Congress in Rotterdam. The idea was for me first of all given by my younger brother who is a viola player and in fact who since I was a teenager was always playing somewhere in the house but mostly above my room in the bathroom on the second floor early in the morning so there was no single way I could not hear virtually every day a viola being played above me. And that might have been one of the reasons that when I started composing, the viola has always been quite a normal asset in my compositions, in my scores for chamber music, for orchestral music, but specifically solo pieces. I started already writing my first pieces over 40 years ago in the 1970s for viola solo and a viola concerto in the early 1980s and a lot of pieces where the viola was really important uh, in chamber music not just as one of a string quartet which I did of course but for example, trios for piano, alto saxophone and viola. And then it started again a little bit later in uh, 2016 when I had met Karen Dolman and she asked me if I could write a tango for her. Tango de Otoño for viola and piano. Um, then immediately afterwards came this nice idea of writing a huge piece, huge in the sense of large pomposa, large over 15 minutes, large, extremely expressive for six violas. And even after that, I wrote for her a second piece, Cadenzas and Songs for Viola and Carillon, high up in the Rotterdam St. Lawrence Church Tower, the bells were rung and the viola was performing a piece which went over the city. A, quite an experience which we repeated later in Dordrecht where the acoustics were much better, I have to say. And then lately even a fantasy for four violas. So it is always there. The idea behind this piece is quite simple, in fact. I had always this funny, strange feeling that the viola was considered to be just nice for allergies, for, let's say, middle voices in chamber music, uh, long lines playing by preference over the strings and not on the strings. And by all that, I felt that what I had heard so often above me at home what I had heard through my brother's playing but also through one of the friends of our family Peter Schietloff of the Amadeus Quartet playing quite often either at my grandmother's house or with the Amadeus Quartet uh, among the family or on holidays where we went all together I had the idea that the viola could do much more than that in fact, it could be quite rough, it could be swinging, it could be brilliant, it could be virtuoso. And all that I tried to bring together in this large viola piece, viola pomposa. And in fact, throughout the piece, all the contrasts of dynamics, of lyricism, of rhythmic pieces, 
of just rough playing, uh, rock and roll, viola. All that came together in this single piece, which I dedicated to my brother, Emil Cantor, but which was specifically composed for the International Viola Congress 2018 in Rotterdam, and which was premiered on the opening night by the first viola players of the Rotterdam Philharmonic and the Radio Philharmonic together. Quite an event, but I'm quite certain that what we will be hearing now is at least of that enthusiasm, that virtuosity as it was three years ago. So I wish you a beautiful concert and thank you for listening.
Hi everyone. Hello, hello. What a lovely performance it was. Congratulations, guys. Seriously, I'm impressed. And uh, I have to tell you also that it was one of the best quiz ever. Whatever happens, well, well all the answers, well, well, the winners doesn't matter, but the questions and the set of the questions, the options was absolutely awesome. But this is one thing I'd like to ask you, Amad. What's that in your background? This is one of your famous oil paintings, maybe? Yeah, I was telling earlier that one of my favorite other things to do is painting by, with the oil painting. And uh, actually at the middle, this one, I'm gonna, it's gonna be for sale. Also the other two, but Can we you... might do a nice thing with the middle one. No, I'm a violist. I'm get to used to look at the beautiful things in very close uh, distance. So can you pick this uh, painting a little bit closer to the uh, camera? Okay. Ah, so this is the famous bird. Seagull? Or yes. What? Oh, it is any, any relation to the viola word or just, you know... No, I just had lots of time during Corona and I suddenly explored what to do with myself. <laughs> uh, so I ended up being paint, painting all the time. It's a beautiful one, full of colors. And uh, as you said, it's for sale. So if anyone would be interesting, guys, make a bit. The bigger, the better. Uh, you can bid obviously in euros, probably not in a, any other currency. Um, I'm not very good about starting this one, but how about, I don't know, 100 euros for this one? Even more? And the money will go to? And the money goes as always to the Viola Society, all the, all the money, obviously. The question is for the Dutch Viola Society and the International Viola Society, we all stay in a family. We all all together, so doesn't matter. And I believe it's going to be well, um, you know, used. Let's say so. One hundred euros for this beautiful seagull, done in a beautiful and difficult for us all time of the corona. Not related in any sophisticated way with the violist, but definitely looking charming and worth uh, all the efforts not only financial, but to keep this one for a longer time, you know, hang out on the walls of your other bedroom or in any other place you would like to have this eagle. 100 euros. If anyone would be interesting, please make a bit. Thank you. Okay. So then we will go back to the um, answers of the quiz. And um, so my first questions, I was the one the first who uh, did the first questions. It was about Willem Kess and he premiered in Holland. And the answer was, I don't know if it's A, B, C or D. Christopher knows which one, but it was uh, Harald in Italy. And he conducted it very often as well in, in Holland. Then the second was he trained the musicians of the orchestra. When the orchestra was founded, they still did their own bowings. And so they did all they did. Um, so he introduced the collective bowing. And it was still a habit in Europe to drink and smoke even at the concerts. And um, so he trained the public as well. And he said, no, they have to, in a concert, they go and listen. And after that, they can have their, uh, their drink or their smoke, but out of the concert room. So that was the, uh, the third answer. Now we go to four, five and six from Anna. Hello. The answer to number four is he still got broke in the middle of the piece. So the correct answer is B. And to the fifth question about the strings, which was the most sold on Amazon is Thomas Stick. So that's answer C. Uh, and the sixth question is, um, the violin player was Paganini. He inspired Berlioz to make Harald in Italia. So the correct answer is B, Paganini. 
And then question seven on the quiz, which viola player made the first commercial recordings of a piece for viola and piano? The answer was A, Oscar Nedbol. And question A was which uh, parts for a viola and orchestra piece sunk together with the Titanic? And the answer to that question is B, the romance and finale by Benjamin Dale. So my question number eight was about uh, Hummel's uh, Potpourri Fantasia. Since uh, Potpourri used to be a form which was uh, stealing a lot of uh, favorite uh, famous melodies in those times. And so did also Hummel. And the question was from which Viennese composer he borrowed a tune and not one, but several ones. And it was from Mozart. So the answer would be A. He used um, Aria of Don Ottavio from Don Giovanni, for instance, among the others. But let's go to question number nine. And the question was, who was the famous, um, for me famous, because from Bratislava, uh, man on the picture next to Bartok? And that would be Erne Dohnani. That would be answer C. Ursula. Yes, hi. So my questions were both media related. And to start with question 10, are we at question 10? I thought 11, right? Yes. Uh, question 11 was um, which of these topics did uh, YouTuber, uh, violist and neuroscientist Molly Gabriel not cover yet on her YouTube channel? And the correct answer for that was how to practice for intonation. So answer D, I would really like to see that video. Um, uh, keep me posted, Molly. Uh, and then uh, question 12 was um, who is um, or from which series is the viola playing dog that you saw for a second and uh, that is answer a from adventure time and fun fact actually his wife also plays the viola in the series um yeah it's uh it's very funny uh, watch it if you have time all right uh, time for the two last crazy questions um so uh the uh <clears throat> the elk sonata uh which was actually recorded uh not too long ago by um Lars Anders Tomter um uh is uh, composed by the Norwegian composer Johan Kvandal so answer A uh and uh point 14 uh which uh issue is not one of the major challenges you will face when playing viola on the moon. Uh, well, um, uh, I'm not 100% sure to be honest, but I think it will be very difficult for the trombones to bother us there because um, simply they have no air, so they can't make any sound. So I think it, it, you know, it all fits together. Uh, no trombones on the moon, yay. Um, and then we can actually move on uh, to uh, to announce the winner. I've been uh, uh, doing a lot of counting on the background. Uh, fortunately, I had some time. So uh, the winner of the quiz is Sophie Boy. Um, so uh, I don't know, Kairin, do we have her uh, in the chat? She will come in. There she comes. Hey Sophie, congratulations with your uh, winning the this uh, fiendishly difficult viola quiz. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, yeah, I uh, I guess uh, you know we we promised the prize and we have actually you can have a choice um, because we have uh, um, on one hand this uh, really cool. Let's see if it gets through my filter. Yeah, here we go. Uh, it is the uh, Viola Quartet uh, playing game, uh, which uh, actually is also a quiz game uh, rolled up in a quartet game. 
uh, and uh, well you know it's unique it's a DBS uh, production and uh, uh, everybody who didn't win it for free can always contact us to buy one uh, by mail order um, and they're uh, very nice uh, and uh, but instead if you already have it if you are happen to be one of those strange uh, uh, Dutch Viola Society insiders or Congress goers from 2018 who already have it uh, you can also get a nice piece of pottery from Kaidin's uh, pottery store so we will give you the choice and uh, you don't have to answer now if you find it a difficult choice, but uh, we'll sort it out. Yeah, well, I already bought it at the um, IBC in Rotterdam, the um, game. So then I will go for a cat in the pottery. <laughs> okay, very good. <laughs> so how many right answers did Sophie have? Not she many, I think. <laughs> she had nine out of the 14. <laughs> it's not much. <laughs> That's quite good. <laughs> and do you also know the uh, uh, least uh, correct answer among all the participants? Uh, well, I'm not going to name any names, but the lowest score was uh, the lowest score was three, three out of fourteen. But three what was the most difficult question? That's what I meant. Uh, the most difficult questions I have not uh, uh, measured that yet. I could, but uh, it is. Uh... Oh, actually, no. Wait, I do. Uh, it's down here. Uh, there were two questions that were only answered once, right? And those were actually Anna's questions, uh, number five and six. Um, so, a question about uh, the Amazon uh, string, uh, most popular strings, and uh, the one about. Oddly, about uh, Harold in Italy, who commissioned Harold in Italy. Uh, so, um, well, uh, bonus points to Anna for uh, coming up with the most difficult questions. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay, so we are coming to the end to our of our show from tonight. I want to thank everybody from the Dutch Fiona Society to be with us um, and uh, we see each other of course of the ne next uh, at, um, next uh, uh, broadcast in July and Marcin you are going to tell something about that so first yes. we will tell everybody uh, goodbye and thank you for being with us and maybe you can go yourself out of the zoom and Marcin and I will stay over for the last one well, first of all, let me tell you, it was one of the best evening I had recently, despite the circumstances and football games and stuff like this. But it would be great for the all viola lovers all around the world to meet again on 18th of uh, July for the next episode of our broadcasting se session. This one, uh, the event will be called From Poznan. Poznan is my beloved home city. I'm a Poznan city boy. And it's going to be about the project we did recently with um, six female, female composers from Academy of Music in Poznan, where I teach, and with my uh, viola students and graduates. Uh, we did a set of 12 miniatures for viola solo, uh, each one connected with each year or each month of the year. It was a project started in pandemia, and I do think that it's um, very interesting to watch uh, the documentary, 30 minutes documentary about the whole project with the explication, uh, you know, answers from the composers why uh, they have chosen uh, several months because each of the composers has written two pieces. And also about to see how the project was evolving and developed into the final stage, which was the recording of the CD. So for anyone of you interested in nice uh, miniatures, not long, um, very, uh, you know, diverse in uh, in the way of uh, performing, but also in the way of of, of composing those pieces. I would be great uh, to have. Uh, I would be happy again to see you on the 18th of July for the next focus. And this is something I would like to say for the last famous words for this one. 
So thank you, Marcin. That uh, so we are going. Of course, we are going to to end the uh, the, the evening with a trailer. We will uh, put on Facebook and share it as much as possible. We would like to have uh, this bigger community still till the end uh, of the year, where we will come with something very special in December. Uh, we'll come on that much later, but. Keep in touch and subscribe to the uh, to the channel of the International Viola Society, so you're always um, there when you need to be there. Yeah. So uh, thank and you very much. Ideas, you know, uh, meetings, and all the things we would like to share with you in the in the next months, definitely. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you, Marcin. So it was people, my pleasure. Bye. All the folks. Take bye. care. So this was the last broad of, of the broadcast of today and we will go to the trailer of the uh, next month of July. Uh, goodbye until next month. A cycle of 12 miniatures for viola solo is a project I have been thinking about for some time. It is an idea which united the creative talents of female composers connected with the Ignacy Jan Paderewski Academy of Music in Poznań, with students and graduates of my viola class at the same institution. It is an undertaking whose narrative is based on 12 months of the year. Each of the six authors have picked two months which reflected emotions, memories, impressions and personal experiences of their authors, which were subsequently illustrated with music. Then the same miniatures became the basis for joint work, a field of exploration of one's own performance ideas and finally acquired an individual flair during public presentation and recording. I am extremely grateful to the others for the work and openness, to the performers for the commitment and the final effect, and I am very satisfied with the whole thing. It is worth combining experience with youth, others with performance, and Judek posting inspiration with individual expression, for there can be never too many successful solar pieces for the world's greatest instrument, right? So, 12 shapes of the viola, uh, 12 wymiarów altówki, as in Polish, 6 clips out of 12, I wish you pleasant experiences. <laughs>